99, 100. Oh, hey guys, you caught me. I'm just doing a bit of a workout here. I've got an old lens from my A-mount days, which has sat in the lens cupboard for the last five years. This really is a glorious old lens. 7400, the version one. And I don't use it because it is such a heavy, heavy beast. 1500 grams, three and a half pounds, something like that. But phenomenal quality. And I've uh, just become picky over the years. I also own the Tamron 150 to 600. So with the Tamron, I get 200 millimeters more reach and about the same quality. So I have not used this lens in five years. Now Sony has come out with a, a great new adapter, the LAEA5, which we can put on our E-mount cameras. And today, probably all this week, I'm going to use only this lens. Um, it's a supersonic motor, so you can do video with it. There is no clickety-click. It's very quiet. You thought it was impressive before. Check that out. Oh, wait, wait. We can one-up that. If you're going out in public, you want to impress the ladies, put the hood on that bad boy. Nice silver color too. I don't know what they were thinking when they designed that. It is a G-Class lens. So all of the great old Minolta lenses were white. And of course, Sony in their infinite wisdom said, let's make a silver lens. So you look like a real dork. <laughs> anyway, this is a beautiful old lens. I'm knocking it. I bought this lens 12 years ago and I probably used it for about five years sparingly because it's so heavy and uh, it's been sitting in the cupboard ever since. I paid a lot of money for this lens. We're going to take it uh, out and put it through its paces this week and see what I've been missing. Come join me guys. Oh, and on a side tangent, if you see Gary wearing this shirt more than one day, that's because I told my wife I'm taking less hours at the office this month and she told me I could do my own laundry. So I figure minimum four days. Right guys? All right, so the first test for the 7400 is the bird feeder. I'm just gonna stay here, take some shots of the birds and the squirrels. We'll start there, that way I'll guarantee that I get something I can show you guys, and you can check out the sharpness of this beautiful old lens. Now, I've hooked it up to my shoulder strap, and right away I noticed I forgot something about this lens. There is no lock to stop the lens from extending. When it's hanging at your side, it will creep. There's, there's no lock on here, so it just as it's hanging, it gets longer, and then it's banging into your knee. Kind of a pain in the butt. And there's what I'm talking about, folks. You walk around a little bit, next thing you know, she's all excited, fully extended. Cold, windy, frozen swamp. 
I need to go for a walk back there though because the other day I did a video for you guys and I had my camo gloves. I took them off and left them somewhere or they fell out of my pocket somewhere along the way. Uh, no gauge today. He went for a run uh, in the truck the other day. I let him run seven, eight kilometers. He has been limping ever since. So he definitely pulled a muscle or something and uh, he could hardly get up the stairs. So he's resting for a couple of days. So he's not joining me today. So I've got the 7400 paired with Sony's A6600, which is their flagship APS-C model. And that means that the 35 millimeter equivalent uh, field of view is gonna now be 105 to 600 millimeters. That's what this zoom is gonna represent. If I put this lens on my A7R3, it's a 7400. On this camera, 105 to 600. So you get quite a bit more zoom reach on an APS-C camera. Well, field of view wise, we're not gonna get into that, right? It's, you're not really zooming in further, you're just getting a field of view that's closer to your subject. Uh, 24 megapixels is this camera, lots of detail. And because of the great zoom range on this lens, I can get in here and separate these leaves. There's some leaves frozen in the swamp here. I can, I can separate them and zoom right in very nicely. Also, a, something to note is that I can zoom and focus under five feet with this setup. So why am I bothering to show you guys this lens that was discontinued in 2008? Mainly because it is a great compromise. If you were to purchase a equivalent lens for an E-mount camera nowadays, there is one option made by Sony, and it is a 100-400 G Master lens. And it comes in at $3,600 plus tax Canadian, okay? this lens here was discontinued in 2008, you can probably pick it up on the used market under $1,000 Canadian. Okay, so now are there compromises? Absolutely. It's not going to be as sharp as a G Master lens. It's not going to focus as fast as an E-mount lens on an E-mount camera because we're using an adapter. I would still give it a seven out of 10 for focus speed. You would have no problem focusing on any animal running in a field, deer, moose, coyote, uh, kids running on a soccer field, any sports, yes, you would still be able to do them with this lens. And I have shot many birds in flight with this lens over the years. Technique is more important than... <sighs> Technique can help you a lot, let's put it that way. You can have the fastest focusing lens and if you don't know what you're doing, you're still not going to get shots, right? If you know what you're doing, you can get great shots of moving fast subjects with this lens. Where I did have a few problems this morning were fast moving chickadees and things that are extremely fast. Okay, they land, a second later they're gone. This lens takes about a second for it to find focus. When you come up and you push the button to move all the elements in this lens, it's a big heavy lens. It takes about a second if you have to come from a close focus range to a far focus range. If you're already at the, the outer limit and you're focusing on something, it's less than a second, it's there. It also has a limiter on the lens, I'll show you. So right there, you've got a full or zero to three meter limiter. So if you were shooting something under three meters, you would, you would use that lower setting and it would focus even faster. This lens is about compromises. And you know, you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of sharpness, a little bit of speed compared to the newest and greatest, but you're gonna save 2,500 bucks, right? So now if you if, if money is no issue to you and you want the best there is, then obviously you're not gonna even bother to look at this. But if you're like me and you want great quality and you, you're you not so worried about you know having the best of the best, and this was a pretty darn good lens back in the day, guys. I paid uh, 1,800 bucks for this lens. It was not a cheap lens, right? Plus tax. And I believe I got that at the very end of its life cycle, 2008. So when it first came out, I believe it was around $2,200 lens. 
So I'm not reviewing this lens. I'm just rediscovering it in my lens cupboard. Let's put it that way. I just want to see and play around with the quality that I can get with this lens and maybe start using it more, right? We get hooked on the newest and greatest and latest that we buy. And in my case, I have lots of old lenses. I'm a bit of a collector. And this is one I feel has never been given uh, the fair shake that it should. And that's mostly because of the weight. I don't like carrying this much weight around. Usually I would mount this on a tripod, even this size lens, and I would carry the whole tripod around. But I have my 150 to 600 on my tripod and you know, they're the same quality. I just get a little more reach with the other lens. So this one gets neglected. Just on a side note, there's my skidoo trail guys. <laughs> Here we are. November 22nd and the swamp is full of water and no snow yet. So I actually wanted to mention that the 150 600 Tamron that I bought that I use all the time, I use it 100% of the time on a tripod, as I mentioned earlier, I, I never carry around and handhold. So this lens actually to have it on a strap on my shoulder and be hand holding it today. I'm actually having fun. I mean, it is a big lens, but this is not something I would ever do with that Tamron lens. So maybe I just need to start doing a bit more working out and using this lens some more because I, I think from what I can tell, what I can see on the back of the camera, the images are excellent. Did I mention it's minus 15 degrees Celsius with the wind today? So not warm. I'm kind of interested in challenging myself with some of the other old lenses I have in my lens cupboard that haven't been used in a long time. Some of them have even less features than this one. You know, manual focus only. They're probably 40 or 50 year old lenses. Um, could Gary take those out and still get fantastic shots? I'm pretty sure I can, but it might make for some interesting testing. And I'm interested in doing that. So moving forward, maybe this winter, you might do a bit of that. All right. No rabbits to be found anywhere, guys. I have looked everywhere, high and low. No gloves on the trail either. I don't know where my gloves went. <laughs> They're gone. We're going to head back to the house. I'm going to jump in the hot tub and we'll continue this testing tomorrow. All right, day two with the Sony 7400 lens. We're going to drive around today and I'm going to look specifically for old buildings, farms, barns, things that we can zoom in from the warmth and uh, comfort of the truck because it's just as cold and windy as it was yesterday. But I really want to finish this video and give you guys my final thoughts on this lens. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter because I own the lens, right? So I've got it regardless whether I like it or not. But uh, spoiler alert, I love that old lens. Eh, windows are frozen. Can't get any of them to work. I don't get that because I actually have the window guards on there. 50 kilometers to get my first photograph and that's it. I've never been here before. I'm traveling some back roads that are new to me. So there is a really cool little shack in the woods. Check it. That field in there just screams old to me. That's definitely a couple hundred years old, cleared. We're uh, starting to come back to the old farmland. Makes me want to go metal detecting. Here's a good example of where we need that 600 millimeters on the APS-C zoom. 
way up there on the hillside I saw an old bus. And I thought that would be a cool photograph. And thanks to our big bad boy here, we got it. Okay, so I am pretty much done my drive and my two-day test with this old lens, and I want to give it some ratings for you guys. No real surprises here. It's an excellent lens. I'm going to rate it uh, out of five on a few different categories, and the first one being sharpness. And I've got to give it a 4.75. I think maybe the only lenses that would beat it would be the, the newest G Master type lenses. It's very sharp, right through the whole focal range. Uh, so a 4.75. In terms of handling, it's not going to get a very good score. It's a big honk and heavy lens. Where it seems to work best for me is right here in the truck. Sitting on the seat beside me, I can grab it out the window. That works phenomenal. It wasn't too bad yesterday on my shoulder strap, but it's not a hand holdable lens really. You wouldn't want to hold it for a long time. It's almost, you know, a three and a half pound lens, so it's, it's pretty awkward. I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. Um, in terms of uh, aberration, like uh, chromatic aberration and lens flare, things like that, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a 4.5 out of 5. Not the newest coatings by far. Obviously, it's a 13-year-old lens, but uh, very good. Flare is not crazy, and neither is the purple or green fringing. It's very minimal, hardly noticeable at all. So, 4.5. In terms of build quality, a lot of guys like to um, rag on these newer style lenses. You know, in the last 10, 15 years or newer, they're made with a lot of plastic. This is not a plastic lens. The only thing plastic is the lens hood. And that is, it's a really flimsy design. It doesn't stay on here very good. Um, it does have an opening for filters though, which they did think of everything. Um, in terms of build quality, guys, I'm gonna give it I gotta give it a five, I have to, because it's 13 years old and it works as good as the day I bought it. It has focus hold buttons on it, it has a focus limiter, it's solid, it's well built. The SSM motor is quiet as anything, five out of five. And the final thing I wanna rate it on for you guys is value, okay? And this is why I did this whole video. What is the value of this old lens? Well, out of five, I've gotta give it a six, guys. It is that good, right? We can get this lens for under a thousand bucks and it competes with any of the newest and greatest out there. Um, it's 85% of what the G Master 100 to 400 lens is. I would swear that it's 85%, okay? And it's only 33% of the cost, right? Under a thousand bucks, eight, 900 bucks, you can probably get this lens. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this, you know, not a review, but a refinding of this old lens. Enjoyed the photos and the ride along, and stay tuned because I think I've got some more old lenses I'd like to do this with. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next adventure.